I think it's recording. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about uh, Gower Champion. And um, he really had an amazing career. There was a point in time, he was born in Los Angeles, uh, went into the army, came back from the army and, uh, you know, from the war. And uh, he knew he could dance and he had a young dance partner that he was romantically involved with. Uh, it was not who he ultimately married. And uh, he was being groomed uh, to be the next Gene Kelly. Uh, it didn't quite work out that way, not because of him, uh, but because of the way musicals changed uh, somewhat uh, over time. And you know, to really understand Gower Champion's choreography, we have to see what it emerged from in the MGM era. And you know, it's very important. He and Marge, uh, when they married, by the way, she was the model for Snow White for Disney's uh, cartoon version of Snow White. She was the the inspiration for the cartoonists, but they had a big break in the movie Showboat. They were already emerging as a dance pair when they decide when MGM decided to put them into their remake of Showboat in 1950. I'm sorry about this uh, letting people in. It's going to be a little slow today and I apologize for this. I forgot to turn the waiting room off. Routine from Showboat elevated Marge and Gower champion in, in the eyes of MGM. They thought this could maybe be the next Astaire and Rogers. And as they worked and worked, they realized that, you know, this really was a great team. Uh, this is from a remake of the movie Roberta. Uh, you're going to see several sequences here of Marge and Gower. And what's important to understand why I'm showing you these film clips of Gower and Marge he takes a lot of these style uh, that he did with MGM and puts this into the Broadway musicals uh, that he choreographed and directed. The way I know to meet a girl. It's the only way I can hold a girl in my arms in a crowded room and still have her all to myself. Dancing is the whistle stop before romance. Well, that's very pretty, but it never happened to me. All I ask is just one more chance, just... Just one more dance? You practically have me on the floor already, so why don't we do it the right way?
Now, the movie this is called was lovely to look at. It's a remake of Roberta. And if you know the musical Roberta from 1934 with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, they also danced to Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. But this was a reinterpretation of that, uh, a far expanded version of that. And, you know, if... Um, if this movie comes up on uh, uh, Turner Classic Movies, you can skip it because it only has a 39% Rotten Tomatoes. But the dancing of Gower and Marge Champion uh, truly is exceptional. And the story has to do with a bunch of guys wanting to put on a Broadway show, but they end up going to Paris to find out they've inherited a dress shop. And they're going to stage a fashion show uh, to get it going. And Marge Champion is one of the people who's inherited the dress shop. Don't ask. The plot makes no sense. Yes. You're afraid of your sister? No, not afraid. Well, then why not? What's stopping you? Myself, monsieur. Honey, I'm the poorest example of a tourist. I bathe in gloom at just the thought of Napoleon's tomb. For educational purposes, I'd learn much more with you. If I toured a nightclub floor with you, danced each dance from eight till four with you. What say, baby? No. What say, baby? Uh -uh. I won't dance. Don't ask me. I won't dance. Don't ask me, won't dance, monsieur, with you. My heart won't let my feet do things they should do. You know what? You're lovely. So what? I'm lovely. But oh, what you do to me? I'm like an ocean wave that's bumped on the shore. I feel so absolutely stumped on the floor. When you dance, you're charming and you're gentle. If our lips should brush, it's accidental. You know my approach is strictly mental. Good heaven, rest us. I'm not asbestos. And that's why I won't dance. Why should I? I won't dance. How could I? I won't dance. Merci beaucoup. You know that music leads the way to romance. So if I hold you in my arms, I won't dance. The reason I showed you this clip, in Hello, Dolly, which Gower Champion, of course, choreographed and directed, uh, there is a scene in Irene Malloy's Hat Shop that emulates a lot of what Gower and Marge did here. Um, he used props. He was really into taking props, integrating them into the choreography. 
And, and this is indicative of that while well, using these uh, mannequins uh, as part of the choreography. And uh, a lot of the satirical dancing that he does in the song Dancing in Hello Dolly, plus the uh, dress shop scene, uh, was based upon the choreography in this particular number from the movie 10 years earlier. I'm showing you this sequence is there are two specific things that Gower Champion does later on in his career. The most prominent that emulates this scene uh, is the ballet in 42nd Street. Uh, and uh, it, it, there's a lot of similarity here. And the other ballet uh, that is inspired somewhat by this scene is the Shriners Ballet in the first musical that Gower Champion directs, which was Bye Bye Birdie. So I wanted you to get a sense of where a lot of Gower champions came from. And then here's one more shot uh, to give you a sense of what he did.
just because it means when it is striking us, the audience is liking us. Our work demands you don't sit on your hands, and if the hand's tremendous, you send us. We live, we thrive. You keep us all alive with Bravo, Bravo and Bravissimo. We're dead if it's pianissimo. Our work is work. Is work we never shirk in a happy land of tinsel and gauze. Because we like applause. Whether you're a Swiss bell ringer, or a crooner, or a singer, or a monologist, ventriloquist, or what? Or a dog actor, or a magician, or a musical song musician, or an ingenue, or a pianist who is hot. Whether you play Punchinello, Little Eva, or a fellow, having, having heard, heard the, the call, call you've given, given all you've got. got. And what better reward for a trooper than the sound we consider super? Applause, applause, we'll sit for us applause. From orchestra to gallery, could need a raise in salary. Give out, give in, be noisy, make a din. The manager, he audits our cause. We won renown. All right, now let me talk about this for a moment. There's three elements in this particular musical number that Gower Champion used continually throughout uh, his choreographing and directing. The first is the use of props. You saw the hats, the, the all of the things that they use by that bar just a moment sooner, earlier. He also loved steps. In every musical that he choreographs, he loves people on different levels. It starts with Bye Bye Birdie, certainly Hello Dolly with the staircases that are involved, and uh, in uh, Mrs. Malloy's hat shop, I'm sorry, in Harz Van Gelder's store with the different levels. And of course, in 42nd Street, he uses steps continually uh, in the choreography. And then the third element was they were on a moving tread, uh, like a moving walkway. He loved that, and he emulated that continually, doing it again uh, in Bye Bye uh, in Bye Bye Birdie. He does it in Hello Dolly, uh, and he likes the idea of dancers being able to dance as they're moved across the stage uh, by other physical apparatus. And of course, this is dead. Out of town in Boston and in Rockaway, they heard applause a block away. If we come through, get credit where it's due, and the way the theater's unwritten love. Because... By the way, uh, the cow in this scene is also duplicated in Hello, Dolly, where he has a horse pulling a streetcar that's really two dancers. So he takes all of these elements and brings them forward with him as he goes across. Because... Because... Again, you saw key elements of four things that Gower Champion liked to do. The steps, the props, the moving walkway, and then animals dressed, uh, you know, dancers dressed as animals. I think you'd get a kick out of this as well. Yes. yes. The general questioning with the new rules applying, you ask one question at a time in turn working clockwise, and we'll begin the questioning with Arlene Francis. Are you a performer? Yes. Are you a woman? No. All right, Miss Healy. Uh, do you perform on the television medium? Yes. Mr. Seth? I can swear there were two voices. There. <laughs> Are there more than one of you in the mystery guest tonight? 
Miss Benson? Are you sisters? <laughs> no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Are you brothers? <laughs> <coughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Healy. You are husband and wife. <laughs> Mrs. Serbs. Are you in the legitimate theater at the present time? Yes. Miss Benson. Oh, I've been away for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Has the theater been very legitimate for the last two weeks? Really? <laughs> are you in uh, musical comedy? Can't think of who. Yes. Are you in a show that's currently running here? Yes. Are you the wonderful Marge champion and Gawa champion? Uh, yes. <laughs> you can tell Mary was going to do it because of the expression on her face. Because it's that Bennett that we ought to shoot. Actually... <laughs> The two of them were practicing upstairs, trying to find a level of voice, you see, with Marge going up. And... No, no, I didn't know. It was just a, it was just a way of uh, diminishing... Uh... See, we have something I in can. common, Mary and Peter and Gower and I. We're husband and wife teams. <laughs> yes. And I, the, the two that I admire most in the world are playing on Broadway right now. One is in musical comedy and the other one is not. That's Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin and Marge and Gower. My uh, favorites in the world. Gower, thanks, would, Tudor, no Gower would you try <laughs> imitating a girl again? I'd like to hear that once more. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me clear my throat. Yes! <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, you, you got it better than that. It's pretty good, Gower, but you just, I'm afraid you're going to have a rough time ever sounding like a girl. Uh, but we gave him a little trouble anyway. We got him. Down I thought they were the down another, and then down, and down almost uh, down the third time. Who ever found out that there were two of them? Did you? Yeah, Bennett, sure. Bennett yeah, blew the whistle. Yeah. He said he we thought he heard too much. In any event, they were in a Broadway show at the time, the last time they actually performed together. And the next thing that happens is Bye Bye Birdie. Uh, Gower Champion signed on to do this. And here again are Gower Champion elements, people on different levels. This is the telephone hour. Uh, <clears throat> a truly famous scene from Bye Bye Birdie where the teenagers uh, are talking about Hugo getting in. Uh, pinned to Kim. This was 1950s mid-century modern architecture. These two uh, boxes sliding in from opposite ends of the stage and Gower Champion having the kids as they're talking on the phones hanging all over the physical apparatus of these boxes. Uh, it was just visually exciting choreography at the time uh, and truly uh, what Bye Bye Birdie became was the first rock musical. It was the first time there was ever uh, popular rock style music in a, in a musical theater uh, piece written about teenagers, played by young people in appropriate roles. Uh, it also featured an unknown actor, relatively unknown actor. He uh, had been in radio and he had auditioned for the part of the father uh, that went to Paul Lind and Dick Van Dyke is who this, we're talking about. Uh, and when he was auditioning, uh, he was reluctant to audition for Albert because he told Gower Champion, I can't dance. And Gower Champion said, don't worry, I think I can teach you. And of course, it's hard to imagine that Dick Van Dyke ever thought he couldn't dance. Bye Bye Birdie, which is the Broadway musical comedy smash at the 54th Street, is named after Conrad Birdie, who is a crooner who's about to go into the army, he's about to be drafted, and these teenagers here have assembled in New York's Pennsylvania station to see him off, urged on, of course, by Dick Van Dyke, who is the very shrewd manager of Conrad Birdie. Here are the teenagers. Here comes Dick Van Dyke, Elliot Lawrence, Strike up the band and away we go into the hit song of the show. We love you, Conrad. Oh, yes, we do. We love you, Conrad. And we'll be true when you're not here. Hi, kids. I, I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. All right, let's all do the Conrad Birdie song one more time, then we'll go down to the train. Okay. Remember the Conrad Birdie Creed, dear? No smoking until you're 14. <laughs> All right, should we try it once? We love you, Conrad. Oh, yes, we do. We love you, Conrad. And we'll be true. When you're not near us, we're blue. Oh, Conrad. 
Hold on, hold on, just a second. Say, little girl, you come over here and sing with us if you want to. What's the matter with her? She's sad because Conrad's going into the army, and she'll be too old for him when he gets out. Well, she's got a few good years left. I'll tell you what, you kids all go down to track 12 and wait for me, and I'm going to talk to her. And stay out of the bar. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Al Peterson, Conrad Verdi's manager. Come on, things can't be all that black. Smile. Young lady, this is an adult speaking to you. I order you to smile. Please? Gray skies are gonna clear up. Put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer up. Put on a happy face. Take off the gloomy mask of tragedy. It's not your style. You look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile. Pick out a pleasant outlook. Stick out that noble chin. Wipe off the full of doubt look. Slap on a happy grin. And spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy face. Put on a happy face. Put on a happy face. And if you're feeling cross and bickerish, don't sit and whine. Think of banana splits and licorice, and you feel fun. I know a girl so gloomy, she'd never laugh or sing. She wouldn't listen to me, now she's a mean old thing. So spread sunshine all over the place, just put on the happy face. It's hard to imagine when you watch Dick Van Dyke, that's Gower champion, that taught him how to dance, and Dick Van Dyke had never danced uh, professionally or on a stage before. Uh, but Gower champion understood the, what he was working with and gave Dick Van Dyke a style uh, that he carried forward for the rest of his career. Here is another example. Again, this refers back to one of the movie sequences we just saw earlier, uh, and I think you'll find this really interesting. 
Did you know that when the musical Bye Bye Birdie was in rehearsal, the Broadway gossip was that it would never make it? A stiff -a -roo. Well, that's because it was the first major musical about rock and roll, and everyone was skeptical. But it worked like gangbusters. The show became a big hit of the season and established director-choreographer Gower Champion as a major force in the theater. Tonight, the American Dance Machine presents Gower Champion's The Shriner Ballet. And as a special treat, recreating her original role, we welcome the electrifying Miss Cheetah Rivera. Where are you going? Where are they going? No, 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 no. That, that's a convention for men. That's exactly what I'm looking for. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't go in there. What do you mean I can't go in there? I can do any manner of wild and trashy things I choose to. <laughs> this is my night out. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Rose Brand. But you can call me Spanish Rose. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute, whoa, whoa. And so, fellow Shriners, with the power vested in me, I do hereby call this 723rd weekly meeting of the Sweet Apple Shrine to order. And now... And now, before the recording secretary reads the minutes of last week's meeting, I would like to bring up a subject that I'm sure is on everyone's mind tonight. As I was saying, gentlemen,
this truly is the Gower Champion style. He loved comedy. He loved antics. He loved props. And he loved different levels, which he was able to, to create uh, with that blank table in the middle of the process, there, in the middle of the stage there. Uh, again, this is really true Gower Champion style. And Gower Champion's next, and Bye Bye Birdie, he won uh, a Tony Award for that. He won, I believe, eight Tony Awards over his career. Uh, and then Carnival came next a year later, uh, again with David Merrick. Now, he and David Merrick had a challenging relationship. David Merrick, uh, as the producer, uh, would do battle with Gower Champion quite a bit. And um, Gower Champion was about 5'9", and uh, David Merrick was quite a bit taller and a bigger guy. And one time he was so mad at him, he picked him up and threw him across the stage. So if David Merrick was going to arrive on the scene, Gower Champion had a way of disappearing for several days uh, out of town uh, until, Gower, until David Merrick left. He just didn't really want to deal with him. But Carnival was uh, a musical based upon the play Lily about a young orphan who hooks herself up with a carnival outside of Paris. And she uh, f communicates with a puppeteer but only through his puppets, because the puppeteer doesn't have the ability to talk for himself. He can only talk through <clears throat> the puppets that he, um, uh, you know, talks with. Uh, this starred Anna Maria Albergetti, uh, who had a very tempestuous relationship with David Merrick herself. They had a love-hate fest, uh, which was uh, pretty obvious. Proving something in the house. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment after this word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger for which the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we use the different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with Bennett Cerf. Would you call yourself a notable addition or adornment to show business ranks? Well, I think that's a question I can answer, and answer with great conviction. Absolutely, Ms. Kilgallen. Does that mean you don't want us to hear the voice, John? No. Just thought it might be a little bit difficult for our guest to modestly answer the question in it, to the degree that it should be. <clears throat> Pardon me. Right. Uh, are you a recording artist? Well, some, somewhat, darling, sometimes. Mr. Carson? Well, from those whistles, I knew it had to be either a beautiful girl or a lassie. <laughs> uh, sometimes. Would, I, uh, would you be more in the motion picture field than known as a vocalist? Well, sometimes I do films, too, darling. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> Does that mean that you are also in the theater? Yes, yeah, sometimes that, too, darling, yes. Mr. Sir? Are you starring in a very big hit musical in New York at this moment? Well, starring or being featured, may I say? Yes. Marie Albergetti? Oh! oh. <laughs> Albergetti, who is, and I think this, this is something you will have to agree to, who is the darling of the New York stage now. She opened in a, pro, in a, a musical called Carnival, and there are many who know much more about the theater than I ever will who say that this is the nicest thing that's happened to New York in many a year. What's interesting about uh, Carnival is that uh, Gower Champion broke the fourth wall. Uh, it hadn't been done very often in musical theater. And what I mean by that is he had carnival acts coming in from the rear of the theater. And there were often times when these carnival acts literally uh, uh, would pop up in the middle of the uh, audience. And this was very unusual staging. Of course, carnival, as we look at it now, it's a 
<clears throat> it's not the the easiest uh, musical to really sit through. The the construction of it's a little awkward. It did star Kay Ballard also, uh, but it is certainly not uh, one of the greats. Uh, it, it, although the next musical that comes along happens to be Hello Dolly. Gower Champion signed on to do this. It was the original Bye Bye Birdie and Carnival Crew. Michael Stewart uh, was going to write the book. Uh, Jerry Herman had been uh, selected by David Merrick to write the words and music. But uh, And again, uh, David Merrick loved to create battles with everybody. And uh, he wanted to have everybody in fear for their lives. And the musical in Detroit was called Dolly Levi, A Very Exasperating Woman. And there were many things about it that <clears throat> were not according to plan. First of all, Gower Champion did not want Carol Channing by any stretch of the imagination. It was originally envisioned for Ethel Merman. And then uh, they went to Mary Martin, who turned it down. And everybody they went to, they actually auditioned. He wanted to audition Nanette Fabre. Nanette Fabre refused to audition. She felt someone of her stature shouldn't need to audition for anything. And of course, that was maybe one of the biggest career mistakes anybody could have made because she probably would have been cast as Dolly Levi, if you can imagine. Well, Carol Channing was performing on Long Island in a play called The Millionaires. Uh, they go out to see her and Gower Champion, who had had experiences in London Ear from 1947, with Carol Channing, just couldn't see it. She was determined uh, that she was going to get this part, hires a pianist, invites Gower Champion for dinner, and uh, regales him with her talents until four in the morning when he finally caves in and says, Carol, I got it. Uh, I get it. You got it. Um, well, there were several things about Hello, Dolly that use incredible choreography that is in the Gower Champion style. In the revival a few years ago with Bette Midler, then Bernadette Peters, the original Gower Champion uh, choreography travels by copyright with all professional main stage productions of Hello, Dolly. And you're going to see all of the things that Gower Champion uh, is known for. <laughs>
<laughs> well, gentlemen, aren't you going to escort us in? Of course, Mrs. Malloy. Barnaby? Well, again, you saw the comic style that Gower Champion loved so much. Now let's talk about this sequence. Uh, there's several sequences here. First of all, there's the waiter's gallop. Gower Champion kept tinkering with Hello, Dolly. And David Burns, who was cast as the uh, lead, Horace Vandergelder, was promised the finale of the first act. <clears throat> it wasn't working. And fortunately, it was not contractual. Uh, and it was called Put a Penny in My Pocket. And Gower Champion had bought $35,000 worth of props to use during the number, which he had to throw away because they created a new ending to the first act, which was before the parade passes by, shifting the emphasis uh, of this whole story into Dolly Levi, which it was not when it was in its original inception in Detroit. Gower Champion knew that David Merrick loved red. His office was red. Everything that he thought was theatrical was red. So Gower Champion suggested to the set design people that the Harmonia Gardens restaurant scene be done in red. Dolly Levi will come down in a red dress. And sure enough, when Gower Champion had to tell David Merrick that he was throwing away $35,000 worth of props, he did that after he told them what this great number in the second act was going to look like. In fact, our champion knew that to create the, that, that suspense of seeing Dolly arrive, it's 20 minutes into the second act before uh, this number actually happens, which is the first time you see the Dolly character uh, appear after intermission. Now, I want to point out these are Gower Champion elements, lots of props and a staircase. Of course, it's shot that Mrs. 
leave. I meant something I'll sing about you bringing your, your, my personal physician. That's enough rouge, doctor. <laughs> but is this leave by only order that chicken for two? Chicken, chickens are dear. Soup, that in his own soup du jour and bowl souffle. Why didn't you tell me this was a Chinese restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> Take two bowls of rice. Now get out. Now, Miss Money, I understand you carry respectable sums in your belt. Yeah, two dollars. Only a thin my
Now, that's the lead-in to Dolly Levi returning. And, of course, the Waiter's Gallop is considered one of the great classic our champion uh, elements of dance. It incorporates everything that are his themes, comic dancing, props, a staircase, and clever comic antics. You'll also notice in the staging there is something called a passerelle, which is built out around the audience so that you bring the cast closer into the audience, and it's a very prominent piece of the Gower Champion choreography that he used Hello, Dolly. Well, I'm going to skip Carol. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Pearl Bailey. It broke all please. records during its run. Ever? He broke all records during its run. Now, I want you to understand why this happened. Uh, they realized that the the play was just falling apart. It did not, the audience didn't even stay for the second act in Detroit when it was still called Dolly Levi, a very exasperating woman. Well, what happened is they realized that they needed to go back to the Thornton Wilder and, and enhance uh, the, the story about uh, Dolly Levi so that she, it, you could understand why she was doing the things that she was. Gower Champion thought this would change the way the audience perceived the character and give the first act a powerful ending. Ephraim? I, wait, let me back up one moment. Again, notice the use of and props before going to bed, I said in the praying, staging. Thanking God that I was independent. No one else's life was mixed up with mine. So Ephraim? I've decided to rejoin the human race. And I want you, you, Ephraim, to give me away. Before the parade passes by, I want to get in step while there's still time. Before the parade passes by, I got to go taste Saturday's high life. Before the parade passes by, I've got to get some life back into my life. I'm ready to move. I've had enough of just passing by life With the rest of them, with the best of them I can hold my head up high I've got to go again, I've got to drive again i got to feel my heart coming alive again Before the parade passes by Give me that old popcorn. 
Well, I'm going to leave you with anticipation, just as it took 20 minutes before you got to see the Hello Dolly number in Hello Dolly, you're now going to have to wait till next Friday to see it. But you'll notice it had all of the elements that Gower Champion, uh, you know, prided himself on. It had, in that number, you had the horse, which was from a prior movie. You had lots of props, and you did have some comedy there. So I, I see there are lots of chats. Let me just see uh, if there's anything uh, that anybody needs me to answer. Yeah, the story about David Merrick dying, I'm going to get to that next week. So I don't want to spend any time on that right now. Um, um, yeah, I see that everybody, I don't know if anybody wants to ask me anything. I'll, you know, we can um, unmute if anybody wants to. I don't know if anybody's asking me anything. I don't see it. Well, anyway, next Friday morning, I'll see you all. And uh, we're going to continue with Gower Champion starting uh, right where we left off. Take care, everybody. See you next Friday. Bye-bye.